my channel. As you know, my whole goal for this channel is to help you build a wardrobe and a style that you love so you look beautiful and feel confident every day. So I'm here with Dorothy to do just that. Um, one of the goals of the Reverse Closet Edit and Wardrobe Building Bootcamp, which is taking place this week, and it's not too late to sign up. You can just go to netamanley.com slash bootcamp and sign up for that um, and, and join us because we're gonna be doing something like we're doing in Dorothy's Closet today. And that's really mining for treasure in your own wardrobe because the key to great style is not buying more stuff. A lot of us have a lot of stuff. We have a lot of stuff. It's really making the most of what you have and then identifying if there are a couple of key holes that you're missing that you can bring into your wardrobe that can really make everybody get along better in your wardrobe. Like all your clothes play together better. So Dorothy knows a lot about playing together because she is uh, an art teacher. What grades do you teach? Kindergarten through fifth. Oh. So she's an art teacher, she's a, an artist, she's very creative and very expressive in her style, and I think this is gonna be so much fun. And I think you're going, a lot of you are going to be able to relate to Dorothy's you know, wardrobe, her wardrobe setup. It, this is just real life, like we have the space that we have and we work with the space that we have. And I'm hitting Dorothy's hangers <laughs> with, my, with my hair. Um, okay, so Dorothy is a friend of mine from church, love her to death, and I'm gonna, first of all, I'm gonna describe your body type and coloring, and then we'll talk about what your your goals are for your wardrobe. So Dorothy is a style dial blue body type. That means that she is what I call a supermodel. She's straighter through the through the waist and straighter through the body. She has these long, slim, beautiful legs. And she's taller than I am, but whatever. I'm wearing flats today. It was not a good day for me to be wearing flats. Um, and so style dial blue body type is straighter, it tends to have more shape at the top and then longer, slimmer legs. Um, she also has clear coloring, which is my favorite coloring. It's the coloring that my sister has, but basically it's high contrast coloring. Megan Fox, Elizabeth Taylor, a lot of other legendary beauties, Dorothy, all have this coloring. Um, and it's fair skin, dark hair, bright eyes. She has beautiful blue eyes, like you can see them across the room. Um, dark hair, very fair skin, like like rosy, you know, like a rosy hue to her skin. And um, so it's that high contrast coloring that's going to enable her to wear high contrast patterns and prints, which I know you love creative patterns and prints um, better than anybody. So she can wear black and white together. She really wants to stick with vibrant colors and dark colors. Um, you want colors that are pure. So like hot pink, bright orange, you know, cobalt blue, um, or, you know, obviously like navy, black, white, those are gonna be great neutrals. So what, she, what as a clear, what Dorothea will want to avoid is muted or muddy colors. They're probably not going to, they're gonna, going to make you feel washed out a little. If we look at pictures of Elizabeth Taylor back in the day, I mean, she wore a lot of vibrant colors. She wore a lot of black, white, red, blue, um, and those are going to be the colors that are going to be your best colors. So I'm excited to work with Dorothy on her wardrobe. Can we talk for a second about about how your wardrobe is set up and what your goals are? Okay. Um, well, my wardrobe is set up for teaching. So, you know, I got to go to my closet and be able to pair together something that's going to be practical in the classroom. I can't have things that jingle and fly into paint and things like that so I have to be careful with sleeves and um but also you know I, I don't always like to wear white I love wearing white actually but painting things like that I, I can only wear those on white on certain days but um my goals are like Nada said is to um you know just kind of look at not not like you know buy a whole bunch of stuff but just kind of look at tweaking things what can I update you know what kind of things do I have that I'm like I really need to get rid of that but you know that that sort of thing so <laughs> okay okay so um, like I said Dorothy is not just an art teacher she's a, also an artist and in her accessories and your choice of pattern and everything you've got a really creative and artistic sense of style so um, the goal is not for all of us to look like each other that is so boring. The world would be a very dull place if we all look like each other. So I'm not going to try to get Dorothy to be a Netta clone. And I would recommend that none of you guys follow and, 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 and try to dress exactly like me. That's just, that's not true to who we are, right? So we want you to look like you and the best version of you and, and people to show up and be like, oh my gosh, that's so Dorothy. That's so exactly. Dorothy, you know? And um, my goal for each of you is to have a style that's so identifiable that the people in your life can be like, oh my gosh, that's so 
you, you know? Okay, so we're gonna get started. This is Dorothy's main closet. Um, this is your current season stuff, and this is winter in Florida. So this is winter stuff, so we're talking longer sleeves, but they're lighter, right? Longer Lightly, sleeves, but yes. they're lighter. Um, and then up here, you've got accessories, you've got shorts, right? Yes. And then she's got some jeans behind her on the cabinet there, behind the, behind this white door. <laughs> So what my goal is to make this as streamlined as possible and as functional as possible for you. And so we're going to just get in there and do some closet editing. And we're going to do that reverse closet edit. So these are the steps that we're going to be doing in your closet. We're going to be identifying Dorothy's favorites, like the pieces that her, are her go-to pieces in her wardrobe right now. We're going to be identifying the essentials in her wardrobe, the basic and key pieces that are going to go with all the basic or all of the favorites. Because I have a feeling, knowing Dorothy, that her favorites are going to be fun. Yeah. And so we want the essentials to pair well with those favorites, so that she's got outfit options. And then we're going to create some outfits um, that you know we're going to we'll create some for work, we'll create some for church, we'll create some for weekend, and um, and just kind of get through the stuff. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. We'll see you in a minute. Okay, I'm back with Dorothy. Can you see me? Can you see me? Can you see me? <laughs> um, so we have just gone through and we did a reverse closet edit of her wardrobe. So the pieces that are hanging in her closet are the pieces that are not staying in her wardrobe. There are also some pieces on her bed that are not staying in her wardrobe. Now we discovered some treasures, including a vintage fur from your mother-in-law. That's cut, that was custom to her mother-in-law and has her initials on it and lined with silk, like a little stole. Um, it, we also, some handmade pieces, including a handmade um, jacket that was made for her in China. Um, some just really eclectic, interesting pieces. We also discovered, so just as a quick, you know, um, practical thing. Let's take the costume pieces, the occasional, occasional pieces, the um, sentimental pieces out of our wardrobes. So sentimental pieces can be boxed up and put away somewhere special so that they're preserved. Um, vintage pieces should be carefully cared for. And, and then costume or, or very occasional pieces like your outfit that you wear to Disney or your outfit that you wore on Dr. Seuss Day. Those are pieces that can be in, in another closet or in another place because you want your main closet to be only things from this season that fit that you're actually currently wearing. Ideally, ideally, if you can find another place, if you can stash them in one of those little storage containers under your bed, whatever you have to do, get the pieces that are not in your regular rotation out of your existing closet. But you're missing um, like a, a, basic, a couple of basic completer pieces in my opinion. Like, I think what would be great for you is like a basic black cardigan. Okay. Um, a, a jacket of some sort in black. It could be a moto, it could be a fun blazer, it could be a bomber jacket. Okay. But just in solid black because you have so many interesting pieces. So something a little bit more versatile that will, you know, carry you through the rest of your wardrobe. Okay, we also talked about Dorothy's silhouette as, um, as a style down blue. So typically, when we have uh, style doll blue in some in some systems, is called an inverted triangle. Some style doll blues, not all style doll blues, can can have more structure at the top of their bodies. So you know maybe broader shoulders, a fuller bust, and they they tend to have more shape at the top, and then these long slim legs, and you totally fit that um, uh, body type. So 
what Dorothy has been doing and what a lot of style doll blue ladies tend to do is she wears something flowy over something fitted because her legs are such a beautiful feature. But instead I encouraged her to kind of reverse that because what you're doing when you're wearing flowy over fitted is you're accentuating your, um, your, your natural body shape rather than balancing it. Whereas if you add a little bit more volume and you do a wider leg pant at the bottom, you're going to be creating more of this silhouette. You're going to be making your waist look more defined and your waist looks smaller and um and just balancing out the shape in your in your upper half of your body so we're going to play with a couple of different silhouettes and put together a couple of different outfits but i wanted you to see this is this is what a reverse closet edit looks like pieces on the bed and pieces in the closet that are not remaining in this closet or rem not, not remaining in her wardrobe at all and then tops and then behind this bottoms and jackets that are going to be a part of her new and improved wardrobe okay well, stay tuned. Hi, we're back. We just did round one of the reverse closet edit in Dorothy's closet. Now, this is her current closet. This is Florida winter. <laughs> oh, that was fun. And we got through a lot of stuff. We purged a lot. And now all the stuff that was on the, the rack that we pulled out, that we identified as we did, you know, so this, the process was we did a quick yes, no, yes, no. And you were really good at that. You didn't hem and haw. So you really don't want to overthink it. You know what you wear. You know what you like. So step one, you're going to identify what you like, what you wear, what you want to keep wearing, what you're looking forward to continuing to wear. And if you're like, mm, that needs to go in the no pile. Okay? So that's what we did. We were brutal. We did it. But Dorothy was ready. She was ready. Like, there was no resistance. You, you were ready for this process. So now... We, you do not have to get rid of your nose unless, like Dorothy, you're ready to get rid of your nose. Um, you can put them in a transition bin and revisit that later. Because the point of a reverse closet edit is to make it short and sweet and painless. So to get through it quickly, to identify the clothes you're wearing, to organize the clothes you're wearing, and to start wearing the clothes that you like more often and in different combinations and to make the most of your existing wardrobe. The, the myth that we all tell ourselves is that everything in our closet is our wardrobe. Your everything in your closet is not your wardrobe. The clothes you're wearing are your wardrobe. The clothes you're currently wearing, that is your actual wardrobe. So when you take the things out of your closet that you're not wearing, that you'll never wear again, that you never were wearing, that you didn't like to begin with, you can see what your actual wardrobe is and what you have to work with and then you can start working with it. So step one, identify the things that you love. This is the reverse closet edit. Pull out the things that you love, not the things that you don't like. Then start. Work. step two is we're gonna start identifying Dorothy's wardrobe essentials, and then step three is we are going to start um, putting together chic and glorious and very Dorothy-ish outfits with what is in her closet. Now again, this is just half of her closet. The other half is in, in um, the hall. So we're going to do that with both, but we're just going to show you kind of how this works with this closet because it's a manageable amount of clothes to, to deal with. And, you know, we've got her bottoms here on these amazing hangers that actually open and close that I can't seem to function, but Dorothy knows how to use. Um, but these are great space-saving hangers. So I'm gonna try to link something similar to this. They open up, so you've got all your pants hanging like that. And then when you close them, all the pants are like that. And, um, it saves a lot of space in the closet. The other thing I suggested for Dorothy is to replace her hangers because she does have a lot of tops with wide necklines. To replace her hangers with the with the velvet hangers, it will buy her more space and it'll also keep her clothes from ending up in a puddle on the floor, right? Right. Because we've all had that and it's not yeah. fun. Um, so now we're the next step we're going to do is we're going to identify the essential pieces in her wardrobe. Now, essential pieces in your wardrobe are basically basics, basically basics. So pieces that are solid and neutral and versatile. Um, now, somebody asked me recently to do a video where the essentials are colored and colorful, and you can absolutely do that. That's next level. When you're, when you're starting to get your wardrobe back on track, you wanna identify the pieces in your wardrobe that are going to go with most of the things in your wardrobe. Those are gonna be the essential pieces that are, that, that are going to be the backbone of your wardrobe. Essential pieces can absolutely be colored, but, that's going to take a plan going into your wardrobe. When you're working with an existing wardrobe, you're going to pull neutral essential pieces because you didn't go into your wardrobe with a color palette of, of magenta 
violet, and rose, whatever color palette you want to come up with. That starts with a plan. If you're going to build a, a wardrobe of colorful essentials, you need to start with a color palette and shop for that color palette. Um, but we're working with an existing wardrobe here, so we're going to pull neutrals, um, essentials, basic pieces from her wardrobe and kind of identify what those are. And then I'm also going to give you a little bit of feedback on what on what I think can be updated in your wardrobe. Now, what I think is important is you keep the pieces that you have until you replace them. I've seen women say, oh, well, I just purged my whole closet and I have no clothes. And then you go out and you have to quickly buy stuff and you don't like the stuff that you bought because you had to buy them under duress. And we all know shopping under duress does not work. You've ever shopped for an event and you had like a day or two to get the item? Is it? It's horrible. It's horrible. You don't want to shop under duress. You don't want to shop, um, you know, like in, in a hurry or when you're in a jam. Um, so uh, if, you, if you're taking notes and you should be taking notes, buy it when you see it, not when you need it. So if you see a beautiful cocktail dress and it's on sale and it's in a weird time of year, buy it then. If you see a you know great pair of black pants, buy them then. Don't wait till you're looking for black pants because the stores will have decided that there are no black pants in stores this season. Like no matter what basic item you're looking for or what special item you're looking for, buy it when you see it, not when you need it. So anyway, we're gonna go back to Dorothy's closet and we're gonna look at the essentials and I'm gonna give you some suggestions and give Dorothy some suggestions on um, which essentials I think she could update and maybe some different silhouettes that she can consider for her body type. Okay, so um, we start, as I always do, I use the Roy G. Biv system, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Dorothy is very familiar with that as an artist. Um, and I, I have short sleeve, or uh, sleeveless, sleeved, because you don't really have short, like many short sleeves. So we kind of skipped over that category. We have sleeveless, we have sleeves, we have completer pieces, we have dresses, we have sweaters, okay? Um, so, this would be an example of an essential piece. Now, if you can see the detail on this, there is lace on the front of this top. It's a sleeveless top. Um, it's a very simple piece. And this is something that could absolutely be an essential. Now, your essentials don't have to be boring. Like, this has lace on it, and it's pretty, and it's, you know, it's interesting detail. But it's still neutral, and it's solid, right? I'll show you another example of an essential here. Also, make sure all the clothes are facing the right way. This is another essential. I mean, it has lace trim at the bottom. This works. This could work for Dorothy because Dorothy has a styled out blue body type. If you have a styled out orange or green body type and your shape is in your hips, you will not want that band across the bottom. Um, I will say though, that I think that we could update this piece a little bit more because we're seeing fewer tunics now and we're seeing more, um, more like slightly shorter tops. Now, what, what we're gonna always wanna do is go with body type first. So if this is going to be the most flattering on Dorothy, then we would update this. My feeling would be that this under like a bomber jacket or a moto jacket with those black leather pants you just got. Mm -hmm. ah! I'm just wait. having, yeah, I, 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 I love that. Um, as far as I'm concerned, this is like the most versatile of the versatile of shorts, of sleeveless tops. Like it's, it's just drapey. It doesn't cling to anything. It's a beautiful color. It's the perfect neckline for Dorothy. I really want to see more vertical necklines for you, more V-necks, mm -hmm. and fewer broad neck okay. um, tops going forward, okay. right? Um, but I love this. It can be tucked in. It can be worn out. It's very, very versatile. Now, this is what I wanted to address, okay? Because okay. this color is magic for you. This yes. color is incredible for you. And she does a lot of teals, blues, purples. They're beautiful for you. Um, what I would like to talk about is the sh cold shoulder a little. Now, I know everybody had cold everybody shoulders. Did that, everybody yeah. did cold shoulders, and we all like them because they cover the arms, but they're still kind of sassy. Yes. Right? So my suggestion would be to do, instead of a cold shoulder, I, I know this is not the same thing, because I'm going to get people saying, but it's not the same thing, um, is maybe an off-the-shoulder or an interesting shoulder. Okay. Um, because you're going to get that same arm coverage, and still a little bit of sassiness. The difference is, of course, you got to wear a strapless bra with an off the shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I do not feel like the, the cold shoulder looks as contemporary. Okay. So I did a video recently, and I'll link it below, where I talk about how to style the black cold shoulder top that everybody has. Dorothy has a couple of them. Yeah. Everybody has the cold, the black cold shoulder top. Um, and there are different ways that you can modernize it. So you can wear it with more modern bottoms, like with your leather bottoms. Mm -hmm. This would look a lot more updated. Yeah. I would do a long necklace with it long to create a vertical neckline. 
Um, another way is to pair it with really modern denim, like your, your favorite pair of jeans. Now, what's going to make a cold shoulder top look more dated is to pair it with pants that have a pattern mm -hmm. that okay. pick up the purple. Okay. Okay? Yes. Yeah. So we want... It's like those leggings we got rid of. The leggings we got rid of <laughs> in, in that pattern. So you don't want to wear a cold shoulder tunic top with leggings in a pattern and they match. That's, that's going to be a dated look. But, but tucking this top in with faux leather pants or wearing it out with leather leggings okay. or black leggings um, or tucking it in and slouching it out a little with jeans is going to be a way to update these tops. My feeling, though, going forward is when Dorothy's out and about, she doesn't have to rush to the store, but when she's out and about, if she sees another purple top that's not a cold shoulder yes. that fits and makes her it. feel beautiful, then you grab it and then you replace it, okay. right? So that's how we do this. We don't okay. get rid of everything. We work with what we have. Mm -hmm. And, okay, now let's talk about the, the magical of the magical silhouettes for Dorothy. Yes. Anything that. with ruching, draping, gathering for a style out blue is going to create a waistline where you're straighter, cover any tummy issues. We all, have, literally any every woman over 40. One of my friends was like, I think every woman over 40 needs to wear a slimming cami under all of her clothes. I was like, yeah, except for when you live in Florida, it's 150 degrees. <laughs> so if you're not going to do a slimming cami, then then this silhouette is just magical. It, it minimizes the tummy area. It's like, it, it's just really flattering. Gives shape. Right. Um, the silver is beautiful for you as a clear. So I, I, I love that. There's another drapey piece that we had identified that I want to try to find. Um, here's the black cold shoulder top. Dorothy has three, like four, black. 12, 74. <laughs> the edge. Like, like, so again, <laughs> we style this in a modern way until we replace it. Right. But I would like to see, instead of the black cold shoulder top, I'd like to see you in a vertical top, maybe with a little bit of ruching or draping. Okay. A vertical neckline top. Um... This is another great silhouette if you feel like you have a little bit of shape in your tummy area. This little extra seam here mm -hmm. is very flattering. And honestly, the easiest way to minimize a tummy and to, to, to create a waistline is to skip clingy knits. Clingy knits are really hard for like for any of us to wear. If they're really clingy, they're going to show everything. But a drapey fabric like this is going to be so much more flattering. And I think it looks more modern. So I love that. We have this beautiful printed top that I already showed. I love that. That was the one that ties in the front. This. Okay. Oh, that's and another magical. A magical. Yes, it does. Okay. It's so that's another fabulous silhouette. It's a style dot blue. Fabu really, really yeah. nice detail for that. So you're going to create a waistline, you're going to camouflage anything you want to camouflage, that's just for... Hey, we're back and I just wanted to show you the transformation in Dorothy's closet. Now you can see up here, I'm going to just turn my camera a little, we, we got to all the nooks and crannies in the back of the closet. No stone left unturned in this closet edit. So we have in the front here, we have jeans that she, that are nice jeans, the back painting jeans. We have everyday bags here. Behind that we have scarves. Actually we have scarves there. What do we have back there? Oh, the turtlenecks are back there. She's got three turtlenecks, perfect essentials, camel, white, and black. So those are back there, the bags, the jeans, the scarves. We have shorts in the corner and evening bags up there. So they're all in these easily, which you already had, which is amazing, these easily accessible storage, you know, boxes. Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree is a great, a great source for those things. Actually, this reminds me of, um, I did a makeup event at my house with my friend Marie and she went to Dollar Tree and bought all of these gray boxes because it just was such a pretty way to display the makeup. So anyway, um, love that. And then we have all the clothes sorted from the bottoms, the sleeveless tops, everything, which you guys already saw. We're going to do the shoes next and then we're going to get to the summer closet. Hey, I am back with Dorothy. We've just done a lot of work. It's like three, four hours later. We're gonna all we're gonna need to put our feet up with some like tea or whatever we drink. I, I'm gonna have my tea. Um, but this was productive, right? I think so, yeah. I'm thrilled. Thrilled. So we did the reverse closet edit of her winter closet, winter, and her summer closet. Um, we access we went through the shoes and the bags, and then we created six looks, five looks, 
six yeah. looks. So this is one of the looks that she's wearing now. And I'm going to put a little, um, well, as we talk, we'll have the picture. The picture can block me. So we can go over some of the looks that we created with Dorothy's wardrobe. So the key is to use what you have. Now, with all of these outfits, we can keep improving and improving and really bringing Dorothy's style to the forefront, but we wanted to start with what she has in her wardrobe, style what she has in her wardrobe, and and, and have, start having fun playing with our wardrobes again, right? This outfit is what I called the rich mom or the old money look. Dorothy had not heard this, this before, but I love it. Now, I'm, I'm gonna actually stand over here so we can pop we can pop the pictures up there um, But this is the old money look so we took a suede kind of maxi skirt with this ruffle detail on the front a black ribbed short sleeve sweater and this beautiful kind of 70s patchwork suede bag and then these beautiful boots that you have that are wine suede kind of a plummy suede color. I love this I love this. And then we also did, um, we did some gold filigree hoops because, you know, you got to have that old money like these are vintage. My grandmother gave them to me kind of look. Um, what did you think of this outfit? I loved it. I loved, you know, pulling out that purse because that's, you know, fan it was from my sister-in-law who's passed. And so, you know, I, I had wrestled with keeping it or getting rid of it. And I just love that I can like put it in, in, in a new look and I can bring out something that's, you know, special. special. That's special to you. I love it. I love it. I think it's such a chic outfit on her. Okay, the next um, outfit is this cream sweater that's got kind of a lace detail on the mm -hmm. sleeve with wine pants. These kind of plummy grayish yeah. purplish slip-on shoes that you that you love these they've got the the cushy insoles and then this neutral bag so oh and then the big wine earrings like yes, these yes. really pretty earrings that bring out the wine in the pants what did you think of those um i like the wine i really bought those pants and i was like i really want to wear them so i loved how you paired it with the the blouse the the sweater um, it, it's more of like what I would wear to school, not as glitzy, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. but, um, but I like it. I would definitely wear it hundred percent. So we created different outfits for different occasions, right? Um, so I loved that. Now the next is, is a more casual mm -hmm. outfit. Um, and we combined this pink v-neck sweater with olive pants, the same like kind of purpley shoes, mm -hmm. the bag pulled in the colors of the olive and the wine and rosy tones. I love that. Um, and then we did these really pretty pink filigree earrings that yes, you had. Yes. So what did you think of this? Um, once again, that would be something I'd wear to work. It's yeah. something that, you know, I'm comfortable in. And, you know, I felt like I love the, the, I would pair it, I, you know, wouldn't pair it with those pants normally, but I want to find different pairs. I want to put things with yeah. things that I wouldn't think of normally. So I love that. Yeah. So remember that olive is a neutral and wine is a neutral. And in both of these cases, we showed how olive and wine can really be um, very versatile colors in your wardrobe. I did a couple of years ago, I did a whole winter cluster, winter capsule wardrobe using olive and wine as two of my main colors. And I was amazed at how many different combinations you can have with those two colors. So those are really good colors for your pants. Okay. I think this is Dorothy's favorite look. My favorite. Yeah. So this is a Chico's top. And then these faux leather pants, which are, you know, I, I've told you guys if I could wear my, if I could get away with wearing my faux leather pants daily, I would wear them daily. I love them. Um, the black flats, the black clutch. Uh, I love it. I love it. What do you think? Everything about it just made me feel like a bazillion dollars. I was yeah. like, you know, there's, there's, there's dressing for functionality and you know, like you're going to be comfortable like we all for the have day, to, like we all that, have but to then sometimes. this was just like, oh yeah, this is. This is that little, you know, sassy girl inside that, you know. <laughs> I love it. Okay, I'm feeling like we are going to need to start tapping into Dorothy's edgy side a little bit more. Like, she needs she needs more because she definitely had a spring in her step with this outfit. The others are cute and casual and whatever. This was like, bam, for her. Um, so I loved it. Okay, the next outfit. I love this combination. I do too, yeah. I love it. So this is like a tunic dress kind of. Mm -hmm. Um with black leggings and then these really cool boots that that you got that i love so loved it um and i especially liked it when we switched out the earrings we added these beaded like turquoise and i don't know and wine turquoise, all these yeah. cool earrings um and i loved that combination what did you think of this look i love that 
blouse. I love how it, everything, the combination, it's like if I could wear the tunic legging boots every day, that's just, that. I, I feel great in that outfit and that, that style, that layering, and then the colors, like everything about it, I loved it. I love it, I love it, I love it. It's just gorgeous on you. Okay, final look is the one that she's wearing now, um, and that is the uh, teal, this beautiful teal Etsy custom creation yeah. with your sequin pants and then those same black blots which we almost purged and we were like nope let's keep them if you don't have something to replace it in your wardrobe if you don't have something that checks that box or fills that role in your wardrobe keep it until you find a different version and this works beautifully I love this. I love the teal. I love the sequins. Now, I'm going to encourage Dorothy to continue to play with the proportion of doing more um, volume on the bottom and, and a little bit more vertical on the top and a little smaller on the top. Um, so that's one thing that, that she can explore. The color combinations, the a little bit more of the edginess, and then just going in and playing with this newly refreshed closet. And, and playing with different outfit combinations. So we're going to continue to, to do outfit combinations, you know, and, and Dorothy, I hope you will keep sharing yes. your outfit. Yes. So she can text me now, share her outfit pictures with me if she wants. And really what you want to do every single day, every single day, you know, it's the rule. You should probably sign a contract before you come watch me on YouTube that says every single day I'll take a picture of what I'm wearing and keep it on my phone because that's the quickest way that you're going to learn what you like, what looks good on you, what makes you feel beautiful, and um, what you don't love as much. Awesome. Thank you, Nana. You're the best. Thank you. This was so fun. We had, we spent, she probably wasn't expecting me to be here for four hours when I got here. I, I loved it, every minute of it. I, I too. feel I amazing, too. and I, my closet is thinner, and now I have more space. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so this was awesome. Love you guys. I hope this illustration helped you figure out how you can tackle your closet, and that it's not that not that intimidating. It doesn't have to be as big a deal. We even did the corners and the top. Like it doesn't have to be that big a deal. And um, just, just start. Just start. And do it with us this week in the Reverse Closet Edit Boot Camp. I'm going to pop up the link below. It's not too late to join us. Love you guys and I will see you in the next video.